All right, the praying mantis is going octane, everyone, and welcome to this new tutorial. This is a con continuation of the praying mantis series, and octane does not have a subsurface scattering yet, so we'll do our best to fake it. Now, the um, method you'll see in this tutorial, I cannot claim that it is the one or the best one, but it is a method to get a translucent material and we're going to talk a little about uh, three-point lighting and also about how to mix materials. You can see the node tree for this material. This is just one material. It is fairly big and I've put a lot of work into trying out different um, settings. So let's hope I get this recreated for you. Let's just uh, go ahead and delete all these materials so we can start from scratch. Okay, I've deleted all the nodes and as you can see over here we have those empty slots now. We cannot do anything with those except for putting in new nodes. So let's just add some nodes. Materials, diffuse, and I'll add a diffuse material into this slot and as you can see it has reappeared and it's called diffuse material. If I hover with my mouse over this slot, I can see that is the backlight. And you can see there is a one and a two and a three. Okay, anyways, I've named those one, two, three because I wanted my lights to be on the left side so I can easily push them aside and I can easily find them whenever I need to change the lighting situation. So I'll call this backlight. And unfortunately there is no way to duplicate a node except for saving it to the disk and then re-importing it. And that's a bit too much of a hassle I think. So I'm just going to create a new material again. This is the top light. And be careful you have to click on this to actually be able to rename this particular material and another one materials diffuse and this is going to be our front light okay so now i can move those three out of the way and i can easily adjust those later so right now we don't see anything and that is because we don't have a light so i'll change this from null emission to the uh, black body emission and i'll do the same with the others as well and you can now see my praying mantis reappearing. So, black body again, and now my three-point lighting situation is back in business. There's one missing, the front light. Ah, there it is. Okay, we have to look from this side. So, as you can see, like in Lux Render, but not like Cycles, oct Octane will only emit light from the direction of the normals. So you can see this ball here, this icosphere functions as some sort of a point light, but it is visible and I do not want that. So what I'm going to do is just decrease the opacity of the backlight, of course. And there we go, it is now invisible. You can see the amount of light it is emitting decreases slightly when I do that, but we can easily get this back by increasing the power. So no problem there. So let's get to the kernel and change this from direct lighting to path tracing. And of course path tracing slows down the computer quite a bit or your graphics card. But um, in order to get those translucent materials that we want, we need to switch this to path tracing. Okay, and uh, since this now slowed down my machine, I'm going to decrease the um, picture size or the render size that we have here. Let's go into like 750. Okay. We can still see our praying mantis, but our render time will decrease. Good. So this is the slot for the praying mantis material, and I'll add a new specular material. And you can see, unlike cycles, Octane only starts to re-render when you insert a node that actually affects the mesh, which is, which is great. And I'm going to put this into the praying mantis slot. And that, of course, makes the praying mantis a glassy material. If you watch the previous tutorial, that is what the specular material is by default. So let's get back our image texture. So I'll add a texture. Textures, images, file, or image. 
and I'm going to use the paint it. And I'll add another image while I'm at it. Textures, mapping, sorry, images, image. I need the um, normal max map that I created for Lux. By the way, as an add-on, um, the, no the new Lux version does support normal mapping. I'm not sure with Octane, I don't want to say anything wrong because there is the option of using a normal map, but it didn't work with the normal map that I used, so I'm just going to use a bump map. It's uh, basically a very similar thing, but it's uh, the normal map gives you uh, smoother results, or nicer results. And also, as you remember, if you've watched the previous tutorials, we have a lot of masks. And for example, there's the head mask, and there is the um, translucency mask, and the specularity mask, or map, depending which uh, expression you prefer. Uh, this is just called mask. Okay, there we go. Now we have all the textures we need imported. And I'm going to put the maps or masks over there. And I'm going to use the painted as uh, the input for quite a few slots. For example, I'm going to use the painted as the input for the reflection. And that means that uh, the material surface that is being reflected will now have the color of the painted PNG. I'll also use it for the transmission because also the transmitting light should have these colors and it should not just tint the, the praying mantis white or yellow or whatever transmission we have. It should have the same color as the reflection. And one final slot that we're going to use it is the absorption color. It sort of adds to the diffuse channel, if that makes any sense. So let's use the normal map as an input of the bump map. You can see that by default those image map textures are at 0.9. I'm not sure why that is, but we're going to have to change all that. And as I said, be careful where you scroll. I just forgot my own move. And um, there it is, set to 1. And uh, there we go, that should be all of it. And uh, I need to set the roughness. Let's set this to 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And that already changes our praying mantis. But we can see now it's way too dark. So uh, let's increase the lights. I'm first going to increase the top light quite a bit, 420, no, 4,420. I'll also increase the backlight. And uh, this is basically the same as in Lux, since we have the same colors shining through the praying mantis as we have absorption color. That means we need a lot of light coming from below or behind in order to get the praying mantis to be uh, shine through or see through. So this is actually going to be 4800. And of course, since now we have uh, increased the other two lights so much, we need to increase the front light accordingly. And I found a value of 450 to be a nice one. Now the praying mantis still looks very dark, and that is because our specular material has uh, still some of the glass uh, properties. So some of the light, or at some point, it is deflect, uh, reflecting the dark environment. So let's mix this material material, material mix, with a diffuse material. Add materials diffuse. And uh, I'll take the output of the specular material into this slot, diffuse material into this slot, and then put the uh, mix material into the praying mantis material of our object. And uh, you'll notice I've pressed pause, and that is because I'm going to make a lot of changes now, and I don't need octane to render all the time. So again we need the painted PNG to be the input of the diffuse color and also oops, we need the painted PNG to be the input of the transmission. The normal map will again be the input of our bump map and that's about it. So let's uh, give this a try and you can see our praying mantis has increased in brightness quite a bit. Let's turn down the top light quite a bit. Let's actually turn this really down. 
and you can see we're starting to see some transmission around the leg, which is exactly what we want. But we want the head of the praying mantis to have a different material than the rest of the body. So let's add another mix node. Materials, material mix, and uh, drag this over here. And uh, we'll use the head mask as a factor to mix this mix material and the material that we're going to create for the head now. Diffuse. This will basically be a, uh, I mean all of these materials are similar in the uh, way that they have the painted PNG as an input for diffuse and transmission and the normal map as an input for the bump map. And if you try to um, to mix or to reuse both a bump map and a normal map, you will quickly see that this doesn't work. And let's call this, um, give this a few um, sense-making names, if that is a word, body diffuse, and this is body transmission, and this is the head material. Okay, so let's connect this, and let's uh, connect this. And you probably won't see too much of a difference by now, but you see that the head is slightly overexposed, or actually not really slightly, but uh, it is overexposed. So we can um, change the influence of the spec map, or of the flow texture here. If I turn down the power, my praying mantis gets darker. This is sort of recursive, working back at the painted PNG. So every input that we have here is affected by the head. So this input is not only affecting the head, but it's affecting all the strings that you can see here. All the diffuse field of the painted PNG are now affected by this one slider. So if you want to have an influence on this uh, head without changing the painted PNG, we need a new texture. I'm going to go to images, image texture, and I have a painted TIF. And instead of the painted PNG up there, I'm going to use that as the diffuse input. And if I now change the color, you can see that my head is getting darker. So I'm getting a control over how dark my head is uh, going to be. Okay, so that looks a lot better. And we can see that factor is, again, is the opposite like it is in Blender. If you have a factor over here, the white parts of that will be the first material. So this is the material that will be visible on the white parts of this mask and not the opposite. Okay. So this is our material for the head, and let's add an another material, and that is again a mix, because we want to mix these two materials together. And since this is the body, and the uh, mask for the eyes actually has the eyes painted white, we need the body on the right side, and the specular map, which is the map for the eyes, as the input. And we need a new material, and that is a glossy material, because the eyes are a little bit shiny. Let's make a little space here. If you drag something below the scene, your scene will get bigger, and you can scroll down more. So let's connect this one. And we can see the eyes are now white, and that is because our glossy material this is white. So let's... Uh, get the, uh, the image texture to affect the diffuse part of the glossy material. And also let's turn down the roughness of the glossy material. And that is this slider. And you can see now the eyes are still looking a bit shiny. And we can change that by increasing the roughness, of course. Let's uh, see this curve, that means that the further or the closer you are to this value, the more your slider will influence with a little bit of movement. You can disable that, 
and now you have a linear progression and on a lot of values actually the slider if you are between 0 and 1 you probably won't need the logarith logarithmic distribution sorry if I pronounced that wrong there so the glossy material is our eyes and um, we're actually getting somewhere with our praying mantis but still the translucency is not enough for my taste so let's increase the translucency and uh, you can see the specular material is the most versatile and it does have an input for opacity and if I use my mask PNG remember this is white wherever the praying mantis is most translucent and we can use it to make the parts that I painted white to be more translucent or more transparent in this case. And now I'll let this render for a little bit and you can see uh, it's a little too bright so I'm going to decrease the power of the top light even more, 20, and I'll decrease the power of the front light because I like to stress the effect of the back light. So put this to 350 and also if your overall image is too bright you can go over here you can turn down the exposure so this is actually giving us a very nice effect and of course turning down the exposure will not affect your rendering because this is rendering an HDR and you can easily exposure correct an HDR file and you can also use a vignetting effect which of course everybody loves you can see now that the uh, transition between the eye material and the head material is fairly harsh. So I'm going to go over to the head material and increase the power again. So now we have a brighter head than before. And let's do one last thing. Let's use a, uh, from the top, I want a slightly yellowish light. So I'm going to increase the temperature. And from the back, I want a white light. And from the front, I want a colder light. So let's decrease the temperature. And again, I'm wrong. Increasing the temperature tints the light blue. Not sure if this is physically correct. But uh, let's just keep that in mind while playing with our lights in order to sort of make the light situation more interesting. It's a good idea to use warm and cool lamps. I'm going to let this render for a little bit and you can see that takes quite a while and this is not because Octane is slow because Octane is very fast the reason why this takes so long is we have a lot of materials to consider and also we have a lot of translucency going on and translucency is one of the things that really increases the fireflies or the noise of your picture so keep that in mind if you want to add translucent materials same in cycles your render times will increase until your picture is noise free so that was a lesson in complex octane materials i mean i could have made a scene composited of metal first but uh, that is kind of easy sorry if i'm stepping on anybody's toes here but if you want to actually create a metal you can go over to this button and click on the outliner and go over to live db. Of course you need to have a registered copy of Octane and you can go ahead and use the material presets that you have inside of Octane. And there is one organic that is actually called subsurface scattering. And that is over here, the subsurface scattering orange juice, but I'm sorry in my eyes this doesn't look like subsurface scattering at all. Maybe the SSS stands for something else here, but this is, in my eyes, this is just a yellow glass. There's actually a skin uh, material, but uh, it did not look that great when I tried it out. Maybe my lighting was wrong or something, but it didn't look like subsurface scattering at all to me. And in the MISC miscellaneous materials, there is a... Uh, lamp shader and I can see here those materials actually get updated there are some materials here that I did not know of. so uh, this actually looks like it's uh, 
could serve as a subsurface scattering material, but there is a lamp material that has a nice translucency to it. Here it is, orange lamp shade, and I actually use this material in order to learn how translucency works. So I have uh, studied or have uh, tested this out in order to know how the translucency in Octane works, but then in the end I did not use any presets. I made this material on my own, and of course I am happy to show you how I made the material. So I hope you learned something. I hope you like Octane even more now. And uh, let's all wait for the subsurface scattering option to get into Octane. And uh, you can be sure that I will update this tutorial once subsurface scattering is invented or is implemented in Octane and Cycles. But until then, my name is Frederik Steinmetz and I hope you have a very nice day. Goodbye.